So let's do our first stress transformation problem. In this one, we are going to determine the principal stresses and the maximum shear stress for the given stress matrix given to us. So there's a two by two matrix. So we're in just to begin here, we're just going to deal with a 2D transformation. So this would mean all the stresses on the Z face are equal to zero. So given that stress tensor, let's go ahead and draw the cube, the uh, stress block. So on the X face, I'm going to draw, this is in PSI, I'm going to draw 20 PSI on both X faces in compression. On the X face, in the Y direction, I have a negative shear stress. So that means I have a shear stress in the X, on the positive X face in the negative Y direction. And it's going to have a value of 40 PSI. And if I can draw one, then I can draw all the rest. So there's our initial state of stress, both in tensor and in uh, stress block form. So I'll set up the equation uh, solution. So sigma x, x, this is our initial normal stress is minus 20. Sigma y, y is equal to 0. And sigma x, y is equal to minus 40. So at this point, really what we're going to do is take those values and head down to the uh, equation sheet. So this is what we're going to do is calculate sigma average. And that's going to end up being the center of the circle for more circle. Right now it's just called C. So if we want to find our principal stresses, which are going to be sigma 1 and sigma 2, we're going to use our values for sigma xx, sigma yy. So here we would have C is equal to 1 half minus 20 plus 0, which is equal to minus 10. So to calculate R, We've got an expression right here. And so that's going to equal the square root of all of this, sigma xx, which is minus 20, plus, let's just take that back. Let's put it minus 0. We're going to square that entire quantity, and we're going to add to it the square of sigma xy. So we've got minus. 40 quantity squared, and we are going to take the entire square root of that. So you would punch that out, and you would find that you would get 41.2. So we just take our values and plug them in using minus 10. We're going to add 41.2. That's going to be our first principal stress. Sigma 2 would be minus 10 minus 41.2. And it'll turn out that tau max, the maximum shear stress, is going to equal R, which is 41.2. And if we wanted to find the angles at which those occurred, we'd be using the tangent equations right here. Both for theta P, the principal angle, and for theta S, the max shear angle. So I'm going to go back up here, and we're going to do this. Uh, instead by using uh, more circle. So to begin here, I'm just going to put my canvas down. My vertical axis is going to be shear stress with clockwise being positive. On my horizontal axis is going to be normal stress. And to begin more circle, we need the equation for the points, we need our starting points. So let's go ahead and mark, I'm going to call it the X face and the Y face, a big X and Y. So on the X face, I have a normal stress of minus 20. On the Y face, zero. Shear stress, now remember, clockwise is positive on Mohr circle to get onto the Mohr circle canvas. So I look on the positive X face, I've got a shear stress that would cause the element to rotate clockwise. So I'm going to call that positive 40. On the positive Y face, I'm going to have a shear stress which would cause the element to rotate counterclockwise. So minus 40. 
So what I'm going to do is go down here and just plot those two points. So I want to make sure I've got a decent scale. Keep ourselves in order here. So we'll call these 20s. So that would be minus 40. That would be 40. That would be a 20. Same thing down here. And all we're going to do is just plot those two points. So my x point is right here at minus 20, 40. The y point is going to be at 0, minus 40. Here's the y point. And I'm going to get all that exact same information rather quickly here. I'm going to take those two points. I'm going to connect them. What I've just discovered is the center of the circle. And so sometimes it helps just to put your coordinates right by your points. So the center is going to be at minus 20 plus 0 quantity divided by 2. Minus 10, we could have actually seen that just by looking at it. And now let's take a look at the radius. So the radius is on here. Radius is sitting right there. So I'm going to use that triangle right there. So I know that that side is going to be 40. This side goes from minus 20 down here to the center at minus 10. That gives me 10. So that would mean that r squared is equal to 10 squared plus 40 squared, giving me r equals 41.2. So I've got everything I need. I've got the center and I've got r. And so I'm going to be able to calculate the principal stresses and the max shear stress. Graphically, what we're doing is we're taking that initial state of stress and we're striking all the way around the circle. To the far right would be our sigma 1. On the left would be sigma 2. This one's also called sigma max and sigma min. So you can see it's just the center of the circle plus radius, center of the circle minus, minus the radius. Up here, top and bottom, we have our tau max. And tau max is going to be equal to the radius of the circle. The other thing that occurs is at tau max, we end up with a stress state where all the normal stresses are the same. All the normal stresses are going to be minus 10. They're going to have the value at the center of the circle. So to finish this with a little bit more information you know, about the angles themselves. So there's a couple ways to attack this. We need to know one of the angles. So that angle right there, right, which is sitting right there. I'm going to call that the pink theta. And so I would know that the tangent of the pink theta is going to equal 40 over 10. So that tells me that theta, the pink theta, is going to equal 76 degrees. So just graphically, how do we find theta p and theta s? One way to find theta p is just take the x point and rotate it all the way to sigma max. Remember, angles on Mohr's circle are twice real life. So that would be 2 theta p in the clockwise direction. So the equation that we're going to use to solve for it, and it's just sitting right on the circles, 2 theta p plus the pink theta. If you add those together, you're going to end up with 180 degrees. That's going to give us an answer that theta p is equal to 52 degrees clockwise. Right? That was the direction we went to find it. If we wanted to go the other direction, we would take the x point and we would rotate it to sigma minimum or sigma 2. This would be also 2 theta p. In that case, it would be 2 theta p would be equal to the pink theta. You see that right, right on the uh, right on the picture, so that would tell us that theta p is equal to half of that, which would be thirty-eight degrees. But there's a direction so that would be counterclockwise. So you notice these two angles. The answer for theta p are ninety degrees apart. 
and we'd have the exact same procedure for theta s. So I'm going to end up doing just one of them here. Starting to get a little messy in here. So I'm going to kind of zoom in to find theta s. I'm going to take the x point and I'm going to rotate it to tau max. So that right there would be 2 theta s. So I'm going to use the pink theta. I'm going to use what I've got on the paper here. So 2 theta s plus the pink theta is going to equal 90 degrees. We solve that, theta s is equal to 7 degrees clockwise. So there's our angles.